Hi, Eva Slongo, jazz violinist and pedagogue joining us from Paris. Uh, thanks so much for agreeing to play a little bit. Um, you're going to play one of the part of a tune from your new album? Yes, I will try to do it now. <laughs> Thank you. That was really great. So, you know, I was hoping you'd sing because I've heard uh, what a wonderful singer you are as well as violinist. And we'll talk about your journey from classical into jazz and everything. But I'm curious, were you singing um, much before you got into jazz or was it part of that? Yes, when I was studying classical music, I, I also uh, took some, some um, singing lessons but in classical music, mm -hmm. lyric, lyrical singing mm -hmm. lessons. And then when I began to, to study jazz with the violin, I wanted to... Um, okay. I used the, um, the singing, the voice, to learn to imp how to improvise. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then I began to, to, to scat a lot, to do a lot of scat improvisation with the voice. And then I tried to do it together with the violin because um, it gave me a better um, a swing feel, mm -hmm. you know. It helped me a lot to, to feel the, the swing in jazz. And finally, it happened that I, I began to, to, to do it also in a concert, to scat and play, and that uh, uh, I had uh, so people a lot of people told me it was good that I, I had to, to, to do it another time and all that. And then um, I learned some uh, l lyrics too uh, of jazz standards mm -hmm. and then I began really to mix voice and violin at every concert. Mm -hmm. So more, more violin, always more violin, but, but I I add the voice or as an instrument, you know, like I almost did now without lyrics, but also sometimes with, uh, with lyrics of, uh, of jazz standards. Mm -hmm. Actually, now that you're, you're kind of, you've been playing a little bit, would you be willing to play another tune, maybe a, a jazz standard or an improv on your violin so we can hear a little bit? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. 
I was improvising on uh, uh, autumn leaves, mm -hmm. but I di the directly started with an improvisation. Yes. Do yes. Want, do you want to play the, uh, with the playback to 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 listen more uh, the harmony too? Or? Sure. If you want to. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. So I was just thinking, it's so great, to, it's um, easy for people to get backing tracks now to practice jazz. Yes, 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 you just go on YouTube and you have some, some backing tracks. But when you were starting out um, as a jazz musician and you moved to Paris, which we'll, we'll get to, but I, I, I know they have a really big scene for jam sessions and stuff, so you had that ability to just play with people. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I was... Uh, going out a lot every night uh, most of all in gypsy jazz session because um, jam sessions because um, with the violin it was really more easy to integrate myself in the jam session mm -hmm. because in the jazz jam session um, there's always the, um, the thing of the sound that it's complicated uh, you, you know, in, in gypsy jazz, uh, you can just play acoustic like that and it's mm -hmm. more easy. But then I also prefer to play jazz, so, so I went also to, to jazz jam sessions. But then um, I had a lot of uh, concerts in uh, gypsy jazz, but not in jazz because as I played the violin, people call me for Gypsy Jazz. So that's why I created also my band, my own band with my compositions that are more jazz, uh, with the jazz inspiration. Mm -hmm. So to be able to play also uh, in jazz band and not only ja uh, Gypsy Jazz. I really like Gypsy Jazz, but I, I wanted to have also other opportunities with my on band, I play my compositions that are inspired from from ac more actual jazz. I think you know more uh, more recent mm -hmm. jazz. Also inspired by a little by pop music and uh, uh, and now also I mixed. Um, I just recorded a, an album and I mixed classical and jazz for the first time because. First, I was a classical violinist. I studied classical music. I did the, the, all the diplomas to teach and then to to make concerts and well, the concert diploma, diploma teaching, and all that. But then 
I stopped, I really, I was uh, a little tired of all the, the, the ground of the, the classic music or all the, the world of classical music and I, 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 when I end my studies, when I ended my studies, um, I just stopped playing completely uh, classical music and I start to I, start, I had already started to, to, to study jazz violin before I ended my classical studies, but, but um, not really deeply, you know. And then I stopped, after my studies, I stopped classical and I, I began to, to study more seriously uh, jazz. But I, it's like, it was like I started uh, another time uh, at, uh, at the beginning, you know. Mm -hmm. Because it's really diff different different uh, way to 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 think the music, to think the rhythm, to think the ar harmony. It's, it's the interpret another sound, another type of sound. Really, mm -hmm. uh, a another technique also. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not. Um, um, it's another technique, but it doesn't. Uh, it's it's. It doesn't matter to play both because then with jazz technique, you know, you you use another technique, but to make a different sound too. So it's okay, and I use more the fingers now. Uh, it, it, it's a little different, but mm -hmm. now when I play classical, I, it's okay. I can really use the the same technique to play uh, classical. Mm -hmm. I even have so, uh, found some things more easy with my new uh, technique with more mm -hmm. fingers and less arm. Yeah. So when you were a classical um, student, I, I'd read that you'd really, you'd had physical problems and you just felt like you couldn't be expressive, like it wasn't a good fit for you. Yes. Uh, I had we, you 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 talk about uh, physical problems. Yes, I had to stop two times uh, mm -hmm. for long for several weeks. I think mm -hmm. because I had so much uh, shoulder ache, ache shoulder mm -hmm. pain, really really because it was a lot of uh, work, uh, a lot of practice, uh, hours and hours, uh, and very I don't know. With jazz, then I began to be more relaxed, mm. and I have really less. I could, I could say maybe al almost no more physical problems. Mm -hmm. And then also with the um, with the music, I I was born in a family of classical musicians, mm -hmm. so I really was into classical, but. Then um, I don't know. Um, there were so much rules for interpretation, interpretation, mm -hmm. interpretation, and then so much rules. And then at the end, my teacher was saying, "Okay, now you have to find your own uh, personality." And I couldn't find it. I couldn't find my my my, my personality. And when I began to improvise, I had some, some new uh, sensations. Really, really, I, I was feeling really better. Even mm -hmm. at the beginning, when I didn't learn, had have, I, I didn't know the language. Uh, I didn't know anything. I just used my hear, uh, my hear, hearing, to to improvise, and I think it was bad. But uh, but the feeling I had was really nice, you know. I I really was into uh, a state of um, um, euphoria. Uh, euphoria, yeah. Euphoria and meditation in the same mm -hmm. time. And it was something, you know, some place, some different place I was in my head. And I really liked this place, and I wanted to go uh, more deep, uh, deeper in this mm -hmm. uh, this place. I, 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 and I couldn't feel that when I, I was playing in orchestra, or uh, no, I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't feel the same. And 
On your way to jazz, I know you had explored tango. And you'd even gone to Buenos Aires to. Ah uh, yes. Yeah. So there is a little bit of improvisation in tango, but not really. Is that the case? No. So I thought it was because when I uh, I was you know um, I'm from Switzerland, so mm -hmm. uh, when I, uh, I studied jazz, uh, I, I studied classical in Switzerland. And then the first time I began to, to play with a band that was doing improvisation, he, they, they were, the, the musicians were playing Piazzolla, but doing it in a jazzy way. So I began to play with them and to improvise with them on, on Piazzolla. But I, I, and I thought it was like that, tango, it was uh, mm. improvisation, you know, but it was because the band was mm. playing the Piazzolla like that. So. That's why then I went to Buenos Aires to to study a little bit the, the the language of tango and it was really great, great experience. But I realized that there was not you, you can improvise the ornaments, mm -hmm. you know, there are some freedom, mm -hmm. sure. But it's not really improvising. I think bandoneonists make mm -hmm. real improvisation, but violinists no. Mm -hmm. I, I really, I, I had the impression that improvisation was not really for violinists. You know? mm -hmm. So it's not the maybe they do, but it's not the the thing, the the. It's not the the. The essence of the of playing tango is not really improvisation. Is an in interpretation, free but in interpretation, mm -hmm. and there are. Also, then, if you want to play it good, you have to really listen the ornaments, the way to do for of all the violin uh, tango violin players. It's mm -hmm. also uh, you have to go deep into that. And then there, I met a Swiss violinist, and she was playing gypsy jazz, and I listened to to her. I had already began a little bit with the uh, jazz, taking jazz violin. Uh, jazz violin lessons before, but not a lot, you know, not mm -hmm. seriously. And then there, I heard, I listened to her in a concert. And then the last day, the, the very last day of my my trip there in Buenos Aires, she invited me to do a jam session, gypsy jazz jam session. And I just knew uh, to uh, knew no, but I I I I was able to play minor swing and. Uh, I think that's all, or Sweet Georgia, uh, two, two, two things, you know, two, mm -hmm. two, two standards. I, I knew. And I wasn't able to play <laughs> the, a little bit, but, but then I realized no, um, that, I, that, that's, that was really what I wanted to, to learn and to study. Mm -hmm. Then I came back to Switzerland with the, with the goal to, to study more jazz. Before that, I ha I tried a lot. I tried also baroque music. I tried Balkanic. I tried. Uh, I I knew I was. I I needed to to play also other music than uh, classical music. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for other things, you know. But then, back from this travel, I knew I wanted to concentrate on jazz. I was still learning classical music. But I knew that the thing I wanted to 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 study more after uh, beside my classical studies was jazz, and I wanted to fo focus on that. I still didn't know that uh, afterwards I would uh, I would stop classical and do only jazz. I, 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 but 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 I knew I wanted to to go deeper in jazz. Mm -hmm. I heard you say in one of your other interviews that you, when you were first playing and there were people dancing, maybe it was a gypsy jazz gig or ah, something. Ah, no, it was not, Tom, no, it was, no, it was, no, it was Bossa Nova. Okay. <laughs> no, it was, it was just uh, the first time I, yes, yes, that was also, uh, that was before, that was mm. still before the, 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 the band. Um, it was just a coincidence, I was in a bar and I, I met some, um, a mother of, a, of a, a friend of mine, I had my violin and she knew a guitarist that was playing, a Brazilian guitarist that was playing bossa nova and, and singing and, and she she told me, ah, but you can play with him and I, oh, I don't know, oh, play, play, and then I tried and 
yes, they, there were people dancing like that. I, I don't know what I played. I think I played, uh, uh, I don't know, bad, certainly. But, but um, with, with, uh, just with hearing, you know, and, uh, Bossa Nova is also not so simple. But, but, but I, I felt something very strong, yes, something, so, uh, I had a very deep feeling of joy and uh, of something that I didn't knew in classical music mm -hmm. world. Really, and then I couldn't sleep in the night, and I was, I want to do that. I want to do that. <laughs> it was very, very. I was excited, really, about about this uh, this moment and this feeling, and and yes, that that makes part of uh, the moments I lived. That made me then go more uh, to look for uh, improvisation, uh, improvisate music improvisating music and and um, and uh, jazz mm -hmm. it, it shows a lot of courage and initiative that you would just say yes to these opportunities when you weren't maybe you know ready like you just went for it that's really great and uh, yes yes you mean uh, that I, I was uh, I, uh, yeah well, improvisation I think maybe when I was small too I sometimes i was improvisating just like that you know mm -hmm. just alone it was not the the first time i played without scores you know but mm -hmm. but yes in a context like that it, it was maybe like the one of the first times mm -hmm. so um you studied with pierre blanchard in switzerland yes. Yes. and he gave you a bit of a formation in jazz what kind of things did you learn from him that really got you started I learned, uh, he learned me a lot, um, I think I studied four years with mm -hmm. him, but it, I didn't practice a lot because that was while my, my uh, classical mm -hmm. studies and I had already to, to, to study classical six hours a day, so mm -hmm. I didn't practice a lot, but, but he came only once a month, so I, it was like a, a quite evolution, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but he he learned me, uh, he teached me how to play, uh, well, first he gave me an access to Stefan Grappelli, he, he, he made me study the chorus of uh, Stefan Grappelli, and um, he teaches me a lot of uh, to uh, the, the swing, how to do the, you know, the ba basic things about swing, and the, the bow technique, the, um, the ghost notes, I didn't know before. Um, he made me yes. Then he made me uh, do some transcriptions of uh, also of saxophone players like uh, Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, mm -hmm. and he 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 learned me a lot about harmony. You know which note to play on which chord and why it sounds good and why. Uh, this one doesn't sound good mm -hmm. and um, he maybe he was the only one really to teach me the um, to to do like uh, ways in playing you know uh, the way you go and then you can go there and there like surfing between between the chords between mm -hmm. the chords of the harmony of a standard and yes that was very very helpful to how how to play what to play over uh, two five one um, how how to find the interesting note in the good moment mm -hmm. and so, a little bit of that for him. since you've become a professional jazz player have you uh, played with him since then done any collaborations not officially, but the, uh, because then I, I went to Paris. So mm -hmm. He was teaching. Well, he was living in Paris actually. But then I went to the school of Didier Lockwood, and I li lose a little contact with him mm -hmm. because he was still te teaching in Switzerland. But I was not a lot of ex in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Then I met him in New York when I was there. Um, and he was playing there with Dorado Schmidt, a big jazz club of New York. And, and, 
and then and uh, yes we 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 make some jam sessions there after the concerts and it was very nice so the centre uh, de musique didier lockwood is really a special school yes. so um yes the um, the school of didier, didier lockwood um it, it's very good because I was lucky to have Didier personally in the in the lessons, but then also the whole school is very good. Um, the whole direction of, uh, of teaching there is really really good. There are a lot of very good teachers, not only for violin, but also um, you you know um, there you really learn how to improvise. You you. You practice rhythm a lot. You practice hearing. Um, you practice the technical aspect of the instrument too, but but that's really not only that. You know, it's really really very com complete, I have to say. And um, there was also another teacher, a violin teacher that was very good, Joanne Renard, and that helped me a lot to find a lot of things and Didier was fantastic also very uh, special uh, character but uh, no character yes you say that but personality uh, but I, I really feel lucky to have, ha have had this opportunity to, to, to practice with him and I learned a lot of, with him I learned a lot of um, but he was is insisting a lot about the, f the swing feel and the rhythm feel, you know, the time. That was the really the, the, the thing, you know. He was uh, really doing, uh, um, making us always tap with the foot, you know, while playing, to have a good time, to feel it in the, in the, um, uh, dans le ventre, dans le, uh, in, in the, the belly, belly, yeah. In the belly. Yeah. And uh, yes, uh, insisting a lot about that, and also about the, the the fingers of the right hand, a lot, a lot, a lot, the whole year. And then my, that was the, his principal points of uh, teaching, and to tell how to tell a story when you improvise too. That was very important. I th I think on these three points he, he insisted a lot mm -mm. Mm -mm. swing feel bow technique and tell a story so in terms of telling a story just the shaping of the phrases the way it builds um... no it's more um, no 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 uh, not really uh, he was not teaching anything about well yes a little bit but not so much about which note to play it was uh, for him it was all instinctive and mm -hmm. he he was playing all by instinct by hearing so very very naturally so he didn't really teach uh, which note to play on which chord like uh, like i i could learn with uh, Pierre mm -hmm. Boucher. it was more um how to really express yourself through the music. He was also doing a sing, well, not really sing, but uh, making some rude, uh, uh, while playing like a, uh, something like. He was um, doing that. Yeah. And then I that inspired me also a lot to, to to sing together, you know, to 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 start from the singing, and then to 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 try to play like I sing, and not to sing what I play, you know, mm -hmm. play what I sing. Yeah. And then that because the problem is we we play some uh, uh, string instrument and we can play always, you know. It's not like. A, an instrument that that has to to breathe, to breathe. Uh, uh, a wind instrument has to breathe you know to to play and so the 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 phrases the, the all the the solo is more always more logic you know mm. better 
constriction because it's like when you pl you you speak you have to breathe you make some phrases with the beginning and then and then you breathe breathe and that's mm -hmm. and that's the problem with the with the, also with the guitar they play always a lot of notes and yeah and um, that's why singing helped me a lot also to 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 give a better construction to my solos, you know, and to, to, to build something, you know, because when you play a solo during two minutes, if you play always the same, then it's boring. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it doesn't have to be boring, so you, you tell something, then another thing, and then ah, <laughs> you, you, that's, you, you, you can, uh, um, Yes, you can, you can climb, uh, uh, make climb the solo, you know, mm -hmm. and then then at the end it can go back or or not. Mm -hmm. you know, say, but yeah, this kind of things, you it's important also to to it's very important to to, to master to master to yes to, to practice. Mm -hmm. to practice. So at this school, there was a very high level, and you met a lot of colleagues that you play with now. Um, uh, in this school, there is a really high level in jazz, mm -hmm. on uh, in other instruments than violin. Mm -hmm. But the violin players, there are some that has that arrived in the school. They, they some has uh, are virtuos. Mm -hmm. classical virtuos, but has never played jazz before so the jazz level is not always so high in violin you know mm -hmm. but in other instruments yes in piano in uh, in uh, drums there are there are a very high level but violin violin it's the violin players i think they come from different uh, uh, background yes Round. Yes, exactly. I, I was lucky to arrive there and already had studied a lot with Pierre Blanchard before, so I already knew the language and I, I could really um, enjoy more of the school, you know. Mm -hmm. Because if I would have been a beginner, a beginner in jazz, I think I would have enjoyed less, less mm -hmm. uh, the all what school could bring to me. It's, it seems to me like most jazz violinists start in classical, but I'm curious yes. with jazz pianists. Do you think a lot of them also start in classical? No, no, <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 no. For, for example, the, the piano player Giovanni Mirabassi, mm -hmm. I play with now. He's incredible. He has an incredible technique and also very, uh, very nice, nice sound and doesn't play so loud, can be very, very, uh, you know, in the detail, details, but he mm -hmm. never studied classical music. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I play with piano player and I, I think they have, and mm -hmm. then I ask them. Uh, last week I, I played with a, a fantastic piano player, Baptiste Bailly, and uh, in duo, and he really had a good sound and we, we we made some uh, classical tunes too, uh, mixed with jazz, and I, I asked him, ah, but have you studied classical? And he said, no, no, now I'm, now I'm trying to practice a little bit uh, classical music, but uh, he, he doesn't come from classical. Mm -hmm. no. So because you've, um, you know, you're a band leader and you write your own tunes, you've carved, a, you know, your own path with your career, but also your pedagogy, which I'd like to talk about, because you, before this pandemic, you were online doing all this wonderful teaching with your program. Yes, already before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because um, I started um, to do uh, my, my blog to teach jazz violin, first in French, uh, only in French, while my first confinement ever, that was my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I was, it was at the end of my first pregnancy and I was very 
frustrated to to have to cancel all my concerts mm -hmm. i wanted to go until the end on the scene and then then to be back very soon on the scene but then in, in it's not like that but it depends for who you know i had some example of w women that could really uh, continue uh, until 10 days before the the giving birth i couldn't i really i i i, I was i was almost um, um, hand handicapped uh, well, handicapped I walk yeah more. it was it was difficult and mm -hmm. had a lot of pain so the two last months i was uh, at home and and i began with that yes at this moment and that was good because then i was uh, I, it gave me motivation you know and then also with the small baby i had to cancel lot of things and I I, I, I was uh, uh, continuing to do uh, this but then with the with yeah I had a second child it's not so easy to be so um, uh, regular you know? mm -hmm. it's not so easy but but I um, now I, with the school and the nursery it's really more easy to, to, to to do this work because now I I, uh, I like to do that and with the pandemic I, uh, that's sure that I, I could develop more mm -hmm. that and now um, I have some things but I don't know how it will be in the next month so I really like to develop this activity on internet and I like to I, I have a lot of very very good um, testimonies I don't know but people tell me uh, a lot of good things about what I do mm -hmm. and uh, and it's interesting and I can work by myself when I want I'm, I'm independent I mm -hmm. like also this uh, in independent and will with, with ch small children it's always difficult to 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 travel a lot for concerts and mm -hmm. not to be at home it's not so easy but I do it but this weekend I was to France I, I went from Friday to, to Sunday I went to France but yeah, when you have children, children it's a lot you know it's, it's but you're in Paris you said you went no now I'm in Spain I oh okay okay but um, I don't well, this year I'm in Spain and I, I don't know I don't know what will be the, the future hmm. <laughs> It's important to talk about these things of balancing, you know, family life and music, especially with women, because in the past, you know, it was so male dominated. No one questioned, are they even seeing their children or, their, you know, they're touring all the time. But mm -hmm. we, it's it's a sad when people give up having a family because of their career, you know, like you should yes. be able to do all the things. Yes. The, what is sure is that when I was uh, pregnant, I missed some opportunities to do concerts, but it's also not so... Ah, there will be others, so it's not... You know, it's not so... Um, it's not... Uh, that serious, it's, yeah. It's okay, it's not so... And then... Um, it won't influence, influence all my life. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yes, I had to 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 cancel some things. But but if I do, wouldn't have children, I would. I think I would never have done this uh, whole uh, thing of uh, teaching on internet. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Now, now I really enjoyed that too. So it's different. Mm -hmm. It 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 has consequences that's sure but it's also um, it's not not so easy for me you know to 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 play with my own band I, I was a little disappointed also to to not have been uh, really uh, programmed being programmed in, in some festivals you know it's not easy and I think with or without children it wouldn't 
have changed a lot, but with children, I, 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 be, I became more patient mm -hmm. with all that, you know, because before I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to go to, to play in festivals, to, to be, to be, but, but, um, you have to have good relations with the good persons and that could could take time to you know take years to mm -hmm. to, to to become present on the jazz scene it really, really and maybe you you won't become so but before i was really like oh, i want that but now now with my children i'm also happy and mm. It's okay. I'm less. Uh, I, I I'm more patient, and the things come uh, when it has to come, and if it uh, doesn't come, it's okay. Do I, you think? I, I do everything I can mm -hmm. for the things that c could come, but mm -hmm. then it's not only when I do that. Uh, the time, but the time is important. You know, to have patience. That's very important, and the children gave me teaching yeah. patience. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think it's harder as a jazz violinist or just the jazz world in general to to sort of get, you know, more known? I think it's more difficult as a woman. Mm -hmm. As a violinist in jazz world, mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, not in jazz in general, but I think as a woman uh, playing instrument and it's more difficult in the jazz world because jazz world is really a world of men. Mm -hmm. Gypsy jazz also, mm -hmm. um, but then I don't know. It's changing, so maybe there will be since some possibilities. Still. Yeah, <laughs> but now until now, yes, it's not so easy. As a woman, it's not so easy, and jazz viol violin in jazz is not so. It's good because it's not so common. So. Mm -hmm. So it's also good to make something original, but people won't look for for mm. especially for that, you know. So I think it has advantages in and inconvenience. It's mm -hmm. like being a woman. I think there are some advantages because also there are also people that want to see women, mm -hmm. but. But for now, I didn't really enjoy the. I think I didn't enjoy the advantages. But someday maybe. <laughs> and um, so your parents were classical musicians. Yes. And how did they influence you growing up in terms of music or? Oh, the. I don't know. I was just um, in that world. They educated me really with always with music make me sing when I was very little and then my my mother was plan piano player and when I was four I remember having uh, seen her playing with uh, with a violinist you know in a concert mm -hmm. and I remember that from this day I wanted to play violin too mm -hmm. so I discovered violin through through them, you know, through mm -hmm. but but first no because first I, I discovered piano because my and my my father plays organ, mm -hmm. so before to to listen to to violin I listened to piano and uh, to organ, but then I discovered violin and that was what I wanted. Mm -hmm. okay. And your partner's a jazz musician. Yes, he plays a gypsy guitar. Mm -hmm. So do you think your kids are naturally going to want to play jazz? I don't know, but but f uh, my daughter of five years old, we already teach her violin and flaut, fl <laughs> flauta. Fl fl flute or do you mean recorder? What? Uh, recorder, like a flute à bec or you mean... Uh, flute à bec. Mm -hmm. Flute à bec. Recorder. Mm -hmm. Recorder, okay. And violin, I teach her violin and... Uh, she, and she's, I think she's quite good also with the rhythm, it's very already, and she sings very, very uh, in tune, you know, she she has uh, already the hearing, it's already in place, I think. But then, 
what we what she the, already the instrument now she's young so we teach her what we know but mm -hmm. but then maybe later she will choose some other instruments you know but we 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 try already to and to make them listen a lot of music too classical and jazz mm -hmm. that's uh, we we try to give all we can now to them to then be able to to be musician mm -hmm. professional or not that's that's what uh, they will choose but 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 we try to to give them also the, the possibility to to already have a good hearing and uh, then we we see what happens Eva, there's two more things i'm curious about one is yeah. um your process of composition how you go about writing tune ah. Um, there are different processes, but on my first, I already uh, released a, an EP, EP mm -hmm. in 2013 and an album in 2000 and 2016. And for these two mm -hmm. albums, I really composed uh, with harmonic instruments uh, like piano or guitar. I don't really play piano or guitar, but I know, I know the chords and. Then singing and doing chords, you know, I composed like that, really like that. Mm. But then for my new album now uh, that will uh, uh, go out soon, I compose more on the violin because I try to to not well, to inspire myself from all the elements of uh, classical music I I I had into myself too and then to mix it with the jazz and so yes really you know like the the compositions i i, I made before i really do did it ah ma ah, yes i did it uh, on the violin and voice mm. and then i composed a cadenza or so on uh, on on the violin but but if i remember good this piece first i i i composed it like that uh, um, and then I, I learned chop and uh, that became uh, but then it's it's changed it changed a little bit but um, <laughs> and then uh, Yes, there are other compositions. Yeah, I, I just like that with violin and voice. Mm -hmm. Mostly, the the last album, mostly like that. But a little also. Um, there are two 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 songs. Uh, one I compose with the chords of guitar and voice, and one and one another with piano. Mm -hmm. There is one we. Uh, we composed when my daughter was. Uh, it's it's a it's a berceuse, you know. Lullaby. Yes, lullaby. That we composed uh, together with my with my uh, husband for uh, for my daughter, and then I put some jazz chords uh, uh, on the piano on this uh, lullaby. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear your new album. So I just I wanted to thank you um, for. For agreeing to speak to me today and playing so beautifully thank you thank you <laughs>